the exhibition itself is sponsored by HBC, and our media sponsor is um, Wisconsin Public Radio. Really an honor to be here. I appreciate everybody coming today, but I also appreciate that you have in your community such a museum with such a great collection, and they even allow people like me to hang their work here. So I'm very pleased to be part of that in so many ways. Today is Earth Day, and I want to um, make sure to do a shout out to the Earth, because um, without it, where would we be? I want to reconnect in so many ways with uh, parts of the Earth and the world, and, and uh, more locally, the Mississippi River, that has always been part of my life. I was born in Minneapolis and lived in four other places along the river, and so uh, being able to follow the river and make a document of it has been um, not only a great challenge, but a great pleasure in revisiting and discovering new things. Uh, there's a catalog, and the catalog lays out all the work, uh, basically, uh, I'll say chronologically, but it's more like um, uh, as the current flows, with a couple of exceptions, just because of the aesthetics of placing one painting next to the other. We'll start at the beginning. Uh, oh, but I do want to say what it, this is not. It's not really a guidebook. It's not meant to be comprehensive in any way. Or my experience of the river is going to be different from anybody else's, just as yours would be different from anybody else's. And so I'm, um, I, there were a lot of things people had ideas, oh, you really need to paint the Eads Bridge, which is an amazing bridge in St. Louis. And there were various places that people suggested I, I needed to paint. And, and they are awesome, all these places that they mentioned. But, um, it, it was always what would strike me when I was in that space and place as to what uh, I might bring to a canvas or what moved me at the moment. And as a friend said at, um, uh, recently, he asked me, how do you choose your painting sites? And I told him, you know, I probably went into a long spiel, but he said, I paint where I can get a parking spot. <laughs> so, this is a little bit of that, but mostly it's, you know, what moved me. Uh, I will describe, I, if you, um, if people care to, you can go through and look at the work behind me as I speak of it, or I, I think everybody should buy a catalog right now. <laughs> um, because it does, I mean, it's pretty really hard to see, but I'll describe some of these works. Uh, Lake Itasca, where the, the river begins, would be a great place to, um, you know, acknowledge the beginning of the river. It took, Quite, explorers quite a long time to figure out where the river began because, uh, well, I mean, it's all in a way arbitrary because you could say it starts in uh, Montana. Anyway, I thought it would be fun to uh, depict Lake Itasca in a somewhat of a night scene um, because, uh, you know, as it's emerging from the darkness. And I, it was kind of an afterthought in a way, but I've always liked the work of uh, Albert Pinkham Ryder who is famous for doing a lot of night scenes, and it was kind of fun to do Albert Pinkham Ryder's um, night scenes, and a friend was reminding me about night scenes that I painted when I was in graduate school, so that uh, it kind of figures into that as well. Um, and then as I moved down river, it's uh, some things, artists, I do have my artistic license somewhere, I, I'm not sure I brought it with me, but, um, <laughs> This second painting uh, was one of the first paintings in my group for this show, and it, um, I want to say it has more atmospheric, a lot more paint on it, and um, I didn't know what I would find as I went down the river. I made many trips to the river and went in different sections um, uh, that uh, appropriately at different uh, seasons of the year, and um, and I wasn't sure what I'd be finding, but what I wanted to do with one of the first pieces was establish a, uh, I've got a, a starting point. Um, I wanted an atmospheric feeling to what almost, um, to me, that one feels kind of mythic in its presence. It's about paint and, um, and just, um, it's not what most people would experience of the river going up there, because there are usually a, a line of people trying to get across the little causeway there basically, it's about 30 feet, and people scramble across to say they cross the Mississippi River by foot. Mm -hmm. And um, I, has, who's been across the river or up there to I guess, oh, a lot of, I see a lot of Minnesotans here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, wow, yeah, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I had to wait for 
a moment when there weren't that many people and imagine them out where I did. And I do want to say that the book does have uh, what they call, what I call field notes in it about each painting. Um, I met this young couple way at the, well, they were near the beginning and, and we happened to be walking down the path down the, um, down the side of the river for a little bit and um, we broke off and I saw them choosing to walk right down the middle of the river and I thought, that is so great. I mean, it's kind of, it, it's the beginning of the river and it felt like the beginning of their relationship or whatever. And we never know what's downstream and I, I just wanted to put that in a sort of mythological context again in, in a very subdued, uh, subliminal way, I guess is what I mean. Um, as I said, it, it wasn't meant to be comprehensive and I wound up painting things like um, uh, just downstream from there, as you get toward um, Grand Rapids, there is a um, power plant that uh, is meant to provide energy to the steel industry on Lake Superior. And that is where some of these, well, this, this right here is from that stretch of water. Yes, so. What, for each of these, what triggered the, okay, I'm going to paint this, or I'm going to paint that, like you were talking about the um, buildings or the, or the couple. Um, does something just come to you, or you're in this spot of the river, you go, the, the yes. creative process is what I'm actually asking you about. What evoked right. these yeah. different pieces? What inspires each yeah. painting? How do yeah. I find each place? Right. Yes. And that, I, the word that comes to mind is ineffable. I, I don't actually know. I mean, I, you see something, and you know, I've tried to, tried to go places where I thought I would certainly find something to paint, and it's not there. I mean, in my mind, I don't see, because every artist wants to bring something new to the canvas, and if it looks like something you've seen before, eh, you kind of have to let it go. You just get moved by, you suspect, it's like a hunt. You feel like you're on your way to finding something, and then you find it, uh, if you're lucky. That's all. Thank you. I'll just say, yeah, I, I came at different seasons, and. And there's actually one in, right inside the door that's on the other side of Grand Rapids that um, it's one of my favorite parts of the river. Just around Grand Rapids, the river does some pretty crazy things with meanders where they'll be, uh, I've never seen them so tight and dramatic where they'll, um, they'll loop within you know 100 yards. They'll do just an enormous loop, looping out and coming back and carving into the land. Um, from a height of, you know, maybe 30 feet or something. Not as dramatic as here, but, but it's really crazy how the river finds its course and having to, you know, keep going through that. And so, um, it, it reminds me of how further south on the river, uh, there are a lot of meanders south of uh, St. Louis where they'll sweep out five miles. So this is all in many landscape. Uh, where things will have these uh, meanders, it'll be just very tight. And it's just a great part of the river. Several of these works here were part of an early, earlier iteration of this show where I had decided, okay, I've gotta go back a couple steps here. I um, came to doing the river. Everybody seems to want to know why did you paint the river? And, um, and uh, so I contacted the park system and they had suggested that, um, you know, we have so many artists in all the, all the places I've been, like Acadia and Rocky Mountain National Park and all these places, and they said, um, well, you know, it'd be great if you would help us out by focusing on some of the lesser known uh, national parks. And I said, well, that's a great idea. Um, let, do you have a, a short list you can give me? Because I'd really like some help to, which ones would you like to promote? And uh, they, they, they named one out in between Santa Barbara and LA, and there was one by Santa Fe, and then they said the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area. And I said, oh, the Mississippi, well, I grew up on that, and well, where is this national park? Is it Memphis, or? They said, no, it runs through Minneapolis, St. Paul. And I thought, obviously, it needs a little more higher profile, so I will help out with that. But anyway, I decided to paint that stretch of river that runs through Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's a 72-mile stretch, and um, and uh, when I got done with that, I was talking with people about uh, maybe bringing the show somewhere else, and uh, I was talking with the curators here, and uh, the idea of painting the whole Mississippi kind of slipped out of my mouth, and before I knew it, I was committed to doing the whole thing. 
Um, so that, that's the genesis of this show in, in short. And here are several of the paintings from the Mississippi through Minneapolis-St. Paul. And I'll just point out, you know, obviously at St. Anthony, this is my view of St. Anthony Falls, the, the power that comes off it rather than the falls. Further on, there are uh, places along the river that I knew from my childhood very well. This is near my home. It's the river, uh, the railroad bridge. One of my siblings, he <laughs> went across the river on that bridge. It was like this perennial challenge. You can read about it in my book, but um, I never did. I just, um, and I didn't do the graffiti on there either. Obviously somebody, some other artistic talent came along and claimed that. But, you know, so more and less familiar places. Uh, around St. Paul, there's the mounds that overlook the city. It's a beautiful view of, of St. Paul that I really, I'd seen it um, before uh, in pictures, and so I knew it existed, but I'd never been there until I did this project. I just want to point out about the geology of the river. Um, there is, it's called the gorge. I didn't realize growing up in the cities that it really is considered a gorge where the, the river runs through. In its 80 mile run there, it's, it drops 110 feet. So um, that's where Green Gorge comes from. And, um, and then in between the cities, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, there's this little park that you just, you don't feel like there's a city anywhere nearby. And um, I call it sanctuary between cities because uh, it really is somewhere else once you drop down into that. And um, Minnehaha Park is right across the way. And uh, if you know the area, it's called Hidden, uh, Hidden Falls, which is again, a great name for a place. Of course, I had to go try to find it. Uh, color of Time. This is near Hastings, and I just, at the, the reason for the title, and it didn't really look quite like that at all when I was there, but there is a moment when you just see things in ways you really hadn't seen them before, and I wanted to, um, and sometimes it has to do with timing. I mean, when you, you just get somewhere and a slant of light uh, gives you a whole new perspective. It isn't all about sunsets or sunrises or anything like that. It, I, uh, how many times have we all been um, in a place and there's just, maybe I, maybe it's just landscape painters or something, but I think it's everybody. But I get somewhere and it, it's a totally different place. I know I've never been before, but there's a slant of light or just the, the time of day and just the atmosphere or something and you're drawn back to something and I think this is what that painting is a little bit about. And then here, I was trying to get to, there are I think eight reactors and three or four different facilities on the Mississippi River that are um, nuclear power plants. And it's part of our lives. It's, uh, it's not far upstream here where uh, three mile, three mile, I live here three mile ahead of that. But um, yeah, Prairie Island. And um, it's actually hard to get to. They don't really like to have people on their premises very much. So I painted the screen of trees. It was kind of keeping me away from that. And I was, um, as it points out in the book, and I don't mean to be too redundant for anybody who's read it, but the, um, the trees reminded me that there is, uh, you know, all this energy being captured every day all around us by solar mechanisms uh, in photosynthesis. and. Um, it's an interesting, um, not conundrum, but juxtaposition between those two uh, ways of capturing or creating energy. Mm -hmm. And it, kind of an afterthought in a way, but that whole screen keeping us away from um, that was interesting to me, the nuclear reactor. Mm -hmm. And then, then we're getting nearby. This is uh, just over the bridge from Winona. Uh, and it, it's called Backwater Glow, and I guess I wanted to uh, do one painting at least that was just water and trees. Uh, that was the one thing when I started out uh, on this project. I wasn't sure, I knew having lived on various places on the river, that um, there's a lot to see, and there really is far more to paint than you possibly could ever do, but um, I wanted to do one that really was just water and, and trees, and I was afraid that that's what the whole show would be. So, um, <clears throat> frankly, I was very pleased in the end to see that there were so many different environments and places and scenarios to paint. How do you pick your color? 
like this is say that water is reddish, you know, why? Uh, well, people who visit my studio are often shocked at what happens underneath the painting. There, um, you'll see it actually in this one a bit. It shows up more in some of the thinner paintings, but they're underpainted with colors that are more or less arbitrary, usually incredibly bright and very different from what you'd expect. And it just is a way of um, um, approaching. I, being a landscape painter, if I started out with green for the trees and blue for the sky, you know, you have to see things anew. And so I start out with things as new as possible, and it sometimes just ends up being very colorful and very different right on the surface. But I start out with a very different color to begin with. And this might have been deep red, magenta underneath in the water. I don't even know. I mean, it just. It's hard to say, but once in a while I see a little glimpse of that underneath the painting. The bluffs near Alamon. I found that place quite fascinating in many ways. This is just as you approach down a very emblematic um, sort of uh, bluff area. I mean, um, driftless area sort of uh, just showing that. It's such a, an important part. Yes, I see a question back there. You paint from uh, what you've sketched out there, or do you paint from photographs? Well, I mostly take a lot of photographs. I'm a really horrible photographer, and so I need to paint. Um, <laughs> and and uh, but I'll do sketches and those little washes I was talking about. They're um, <clears throat> small studies, but I again, even those I may start on site. But everything gets done in my studio. I'm a very slow painter, despite. Um, <clears throat> what it looks like, where the paint gets slapped on. Mm -hmm. It gets slapped off as well. I, I scrape it off and, and they're typically, a typical size painting will be on the, on the easel for a good month on average. So um, it goes through a lot of iterations or reconsiderations. and um, Yeah, so I, I could not be a plain air painter. I've done several that way, but it, it just, the time period just won't allow. And the length of the river, it's just too much turf to cover. Mm -hmm. All right, and again, uh, this is at nearby, it's at, um, uh, oh yeah, the lake right here, Lake Pepin. And um, uh, just getting there at, at a moment that I wanted to um, remember. It would have been a very cloudy, rainy, kind of nasty day in a way, and um, then the sun came through and hit, hit a line of, of trees, and it was a gold glow at the end of the day, and, um, sometimes it's just, it sets up a nice dynamic and, I don't know, like to play with the colors as I did in this one here. And this I, is called Land of the Turtles because it was at Trempolo National Wildlife Refuge. It was egg laying season and I saw so many turtles. I'd never really seen that many before in my life and they were all intent on um, laying their eggs in the soft sand of the spit of land it's about a mile long. And, um, so it gets you out to the middle of this Lagoon, basically. And where, where is this one? The wild? This is Tremplo National Wildlife Refuge, as, oh. as is this. This is a, a trail that you follow along the river, and then it goes out to this jump of land. It goes out to the railroad track. You can't quite get to the railroad track because they have a fence there and seal it off. But so, like Perot Park, you mean? No, Trump no, it's in national. It's in the uh, wild ref, wildlife wildlife refuge, refuge. right? And this is, again, just the way to that area, but um, I, it's probably the least riverine sort of thing, but the river is literally about 20, 30 feet away. I was intrigued, by the way. The hills are just so amazing, but I, I felt like they needed um, somebody to play with here. So they had, i would seen these clouds kind of looking like they were um, interacting, literally, with the, uh, with the hills. In a way, they are because of the motion of the atmosphere, but I suspect these clouds are a little higher up than would be pushed by those hills. Did you see the horse in it? Um, no, I try not to. <laughs> I, I see clouds. <laughs> yep. Moving over here, um, this is probably, I really wanted to do something that um, uh, emblematic for me of what the river was about. Um, and this is nearby, as you know, yes. if you're, you're from around here, it's Alma. Yes. But it's, it's one of the, um, 
the, the key places along the river to really get a good view. Yeah. Um, behind you, if you, is uh, a painting. Now this is actually further mm -hmm. downstream, but uh, again, I just wanted to get a, a feel for the river when it gets really wide and deep. And this is also near Memphis. And again, I there were a lot of places where I saw people interacting with the river, you know, on river boats and. Um, fishing and doing all kinds of things, but these women were accommodating, and I really wanted to show that the river is important even as a food source for some people. So, um, you know, the river touches our lives in many different ways. Here's a painting of, um, again, near Memphis, where <clears throat> the sands of floods have come up, and this is really familiar in a lot of places down south where. It, the river just takes over and it's known as a very bad neighbor. So you, you'll notice down south there will be um, huge, uh, well people generally, the, the highways don't follow the river closely down south at all because of the flooding that will happen. And also the levees are, if there is an old town there, you can be right by the river but never see it until you climb up 20 or 30 feet and you're over the height of some of the houses in order to see the river and that's you know all about the strength of the old muddy and then here was an unusual place uh, along the river where to me as a northerner I've never seen the fields on fire like they did down there for uh, at the end of the season yes a question about the picture in the middle the yeah. horizon is not uh, uh, horizontal what was your thinking there it was just an aesthetic decision. I don't know what to say yeah. to that. I guess I wanted it to be a little more dynamic. A view where everything's kind of collapsing in on the center, mm -hmm. and I wanted to have that, the river being part of that as well. It's more aesthetic than, mm -hmm. hmm. or maybe I thought it was straight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when I first encountered the river for doing this project on the whole scale that I was going to be working at, I came to the river at this point near the Quad Cities. Uh, this, this place was kind of a touchstone for the river for me, so I painted a few versions of it. Very heavy paint, somewhat like the first painting of the river. And these just have little stories with them about this mound that I'm standing on. It's one of the Mississippian culture mounds at Cahokia Mounds, which is um, from uh, about six to um, 900 years ago, I believe and uh, built up by the Native Americans at the time. And, um, but I also realized, having lived and gone to school nearby, uh, graduate school that is, um, that there was this other mound in the distance which wasn't from that era, era but actually contemporary. It's one of our uh, Mount Trashmores, I think people call them. And, um, but it also you know, shows off the city there on the horizon. So the old mound builders and the new mound builders well, this is my ode to Mark Twain. I'm not sure what else I'll say about that. <laughs> Except that, no, that's, a, that's about it. This one has a lot of significance for me in a way because of what it's um, saying. <clears throat> the title is Stay In, and that is what the rest of the sign says, Stay In Vehicle. And it's on a uh, <clears throat> bridge over the Mississippi at Fort Madison. And I, of course, when they put the sign like that, I'm. It basically says, get out of your car and find something to paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's kind of a something to keep in mind all the time for all of us, right? Just, we need to get out and experience the world. This is one of the last uh, lock and dam areas on the river. It's near, just north of St. Louis at Alton. And um, here's this hole in the levee. Uh, just above or below the lock. I can't remember. Anyway, I just it was interesting to me how it opened like a, a theater proscenium arch onto this activity of the river. Otherwise, you wouldn't really see the river if that weren't open and you didn't go up on top and didn't drive along the top. Uh, a picture of Hannibal that uh, it's a very touristy town that most people wouldn't see it that way unless you're early riser because it's uh, uh, the times I've been through there it's very uh, heavily trafficked and touristy and I just wanted to catch um, such an archetypal river town in its somnolence basically um, and then other, other plays of light along the river 
these two have the same kind of thing going on, but with a very natural environment, and then one with a bridge across it, but it, all, it catches something of the dynamism and the beauty that I find along the river. This is actually a tributary to the Mississippi. It's the, oops, I got myself in a corner. Now I'm gonna have to say the name. Makokwada, I believe they say. Anybody know the, the actual pronunciation? That's right. Makokwada, okay. We'll go over it here now. Um, there are a couple paintings of the bridge in uh, Dubuque and some high views of the river near Balltown that I'm just gonna reference by pointing to them. And, but here I wanna finish on these few paintings. This is um, beyond the levees. There were very interesting things to paint. This is uh, Natchez Bluff. Um, the city of Natchez goes back to the Civil War. I mean, it's way beyond that, but it has a great long history and, um, and some great views as there uh, an amazing uh, time of day just after a huge thunderstorm moved in and I kind of wanted to catch the tail end of that um, with at least one painting, so I have that. And then these are, um, I decided that as I wanted to cross the Mississippi River at the beginning, I really wanted to cross it down south and it was really hard to get a vantage point without getting up in the air, so I linked up with this wonderful pilot who is very happy to bring an artist up in the sky and uh, take a look down. And these are, this is near, this is, this is my view of New Orleans the day before Mardi Gras, so I don't know what you'd call that Monday. <laughs> um, and this is the very end of the Delta. This is actually the Gulf kind of coming in out here, but I was intrigued by these. It looked like some kind of, uh, some aliens had come in and left a message, like some kind of script that I wasn't, that I could almost in a way too easily read if there's something going on here. And it looks like global warming water rising, but it's actually probably a little bit of that, but more of that, um, because the silt doesn't come down the river, it isn't able to spread out across the delta. And, and then a typical kind of meandering area down there, just, it's fascinating. I love seeing that sort of thing. Topography and um, uh, topographic maps are so intriguing to me. And um, that's a little bit of an ode to being able to see things in that more abstracted kind of way. And I was going to give a story about a pie shop, but it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll come back. This one is named Palimpsest. Is that a name you just made up? No, it's a, it's a word. Uh, Palimpsest is it's a word for actually would have been appropriate back there as well. It, it refers to things underneath the surface uh -huh. and showing up. Like if uh, you know if you were a detective and somebody had written something on a pad of paper and wandered away, the, the palimpsest would be oh. underneath more often raised than embossed. But there's like a trace of something that had been there before. It's like runways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, the, these were created canals that I'm not sure why they had to race across in so many different ways. I don't know if it was fishing, shrimping, uh, you know, cargo. Really strange, but they had these little barriers across. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'd like to know more about that. Well, I do know the story about the pie shop. It's short, and I wanted to start off with it to say that also along the river, it isn't just landscapes, but it's people and places and things that people do there. And I happened into the town of Bellevue, Iowa, on the day that this pie shop opened. And I um, I was very lucky because I love pie, and um, it, they, I get, they, it was a woman running the shop with her three kids there, and they were all, it was so great because I, um, I remember handing her the money and she handing it back, the, the pie back with a big smile, and her kids were looking in awe. My mom got money for a piece of pie. It was so cool. I just really liked being part of that, and, um, and the pie was great too. But it reminds me of all the things that you can find along the river, all these different unique little places. And, but in a way, and this is where I wanted to come back to in the end, was that uh, I've been back trying to relocate that and it's already gone. So like the river itself, you know, you can never step in twice in that moment of light and our lives and everything about just the experience of being here or there or anywhere. It's just, it's really, it's kind of a, a symbol for that for me, that pie shop. I always remember it, 
and it was an important part of the river that no longer exists. So if anybody has any more questions, I'm open to that, or you can find me. I'll be here for a little bit still, but yes, I'm a question. I'm curious if you were, have ever been informed when you were younger from um, sure. Mark Twain or Sam, like Life on the Mississippi. Or, it's kind of like the way you sound and all the changes, and, and it's very interesting. Oh, well, I'll have to read that. Back. <laughs> One last quickie. Is yes. That, have you ever uh, looked at Constable's work? Oh, yeah. Because your clouds remind me of Constable quite a lot. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. It's, uh, yeah, he's uh, an early painter of cloudscapes. I mean, yeah. it was about clouds. Mostly, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love yeah. that blue. Many of your paintings have, have uh, smokestacks and nuclear power plants. And is that, would you mean that as a, any form of a statement, either negative or positive? Or? Yeah, the statement is they are there. Yeah. I mean, it's really just a part of the river in our lives. And, you know, whether we want them there or not, we need them there now, and I, I'm an environmentalist, but I'm also a realist that this is just where we are right now, and it'd be great if it was all solar panels and yeah. until we trip on all of those, and who knows what. Yeah. So I, and, and I think, you know, I wanted to do a nuclear, I wanted to go out of my way for the nuclear power plant, but the other ones are more accidental, it's like, like I stumble into them. And they change the environment so much. I want in a visual, aesthetic way. I just wanted to record that. It's part of yeah. the story. When you do your paintings, do you um, do them live, or do you always take a picture of them? Well, I could not do these live, as you say, on plain air, as they say. I mean, just painting on site, because I spend so much time on them that um, I've realized that. I'm good, you know, the light is good for usually maybe an hour before it shifts and like I said, these get contemplated for at least a month on, on average and sometimes it's years before I'm, I feel like I'm done with them. So it would just be counterproductive. I'm curious about the nuts and bolts of the collection. Is this the first show? This is the first showing of this and exhibition. And yeah. they will all travel together for... How many years? Um, What's their future? The, Will they be sold? Yeah, it'll, the show continues on to Watermark Art Center up in Bemidji near the, uh, mm -hmm. the source of the Mississippi, and then it goes down to Dubuque, Iowa, the Dubuque Museum of Art. Your, your National Park uh, paintings, uh, do you, where do you see examples of those? We've enjoyed all three of the parks you were the residents at. They're not in one collection anywhere. I do, if you email me, I could send you photographs of them or something, but um, uh, where? That, yeah, it's a diverse collection. And a lot of those were plein air paintings. I did them on site. So Yosemite and Acadia National Park and Rocky Mountain National Park. Yep. Did you do the same one of that large one in Rocky Mountains? You know, where there was that was not plein air, there. yeah. No, that was actually, that was the view from my cabin that they gave me. It was an amazing view across Moraine Park, in the park, beautiful. But um, yeah, that was 40 by 50 inches and uh, came from a, a small 8 by 10 painting I did. I, I guess I'll end the loud part now, and if anybody else wants to ask me a more quietly answered question, you can do that. I'll just be wandering around a little bit. So thank you. Thank you.